I wanted to be at Texas State. Uh, I chose to be at Texas State. Uh, I'm from Texas. That was important to me. Um, I always knew if the right guy got this job, you better watch out. You better watch out. This is Win Now or Get Bent, episode 142. If you don't already know, I'm Kev Tardello, coming to you on Thursday, November 9th. And G.J. Kenny needs a raise. I feel like I haven't said that in a while. But we got to put that out there. I got to start the pod with it. We got to launch it out there. Seeing P5 fans from other schools starting to make photoshops with G.J. Kenny wearing their gear. I don't like it. I don't like it. Let's get on that ball. I'm sure. I'm sure. Who knows? Maybe that's already in motion. And we don't, we don't see it on the surface. But this episode, great episode. Preview of the game. Coastal Carolina, of course. We've also got Tyler Huff. A nice, about 40 minutes interview. We'll uh, start off with a quick preview, and then we'll jump into Tyler Huff. He rode the motorcycle out last game. If you missed it, you can go on our YouTube page, Win Now or Get Bent on YouTube, and you can see him ride it out in our recap. And we also have a short of just him doing the ride. It was pretty cool. Cool talking to him about that. Uh, he, he was in the Navy for a while before playing college football took 10 years off of football before coming back very interesting story cool stuff a lot of correlations between the two of us between both living in japan and both delivering packages for amazon so fun fun convo with tyler huff i'll have to bring him on more often but before we get there this episode is brought to you by tgc tgc llc the galindo collective.com that's g-a-l-i-n-d-o galindo collective.com a team of professional consultants dedicated to helping others realize their business potential through people planning and practice their services cover a wide range of areas such as business strategy marketing human resources and financial planning if you own property or a business and want to maximize its profitability contact tgc at the galindo collective.com and follow their social media platforms at TGC underscore LLC and on Instagram and Facebook at the Galindo Collective. Shout out to my guy, Rick Galindo, a true Texas State sicko, a Texas State grad. He's been with us since before the season and during the season. Got to get with my guy. He was just in France. I was just texting him talking about that. Uh, shout out to Rick Galindo. Uh, hit him up, the Galindo Collective.com. We are also sponsored by Balcones Roofing and Remodeling, the most experienced F-Wave roofing contractor in Central Texas. F-Wave is a highly impact-resistant lifetime shingle with stunning designer curb appeal. It is the only roofing product on the market with an exclusive hail warranty. Got to get that hail warranty. It's as good as gold here in Central Texas. All of you know that. Been saying it all season. Get on that F-Wave. Get on the new wave, which is the F wave. The kid's still saying that. I don't know. I'm not young anymore. Get that F wave and you don't have to deal with all the insurance and everything when a hailstorm does come. Shout out to my guy, Carl Larson, a new sicko, converted Gamecock, converted over here to the maroon and gold here with the good guys. Hit them up at balconesroofsaustin.com. That's B-A-L-C-O-N-E-S, balconesroofsaustin.com, 512-937-8805. It's 512-937-8805. And on Twitter, at Balcones Roofing. And our next partner, you know who this is, Thaddeus Watkins, San Marcus Edward Jones Financial Advisor. My guy, Thad, former Texas State offensive lineman. Does your financial advisor take the time to really listen to you? Is your financial strategy personalized to you and your family? Will your financial advisor be there? Is your life and financial situation change? When you work with Thaddeus Watkins, your San Marcos Edward Jones financial advisor, he focuses on what's important to you. You'll work together and use an established process to create a personalized financial strategy backed by the advice, tools, and resources to help you reach your goals. Contact Thaddeus Watkins at 737-373-8200. That's 737-373-8200 and at edwardjones.com slash Thaddeus hyphen Watkins and on Twitter, big Thad, B I G G T H A D D underscore who better to protect your finances than a former Texas state offensive lineman, Thaddeus Watkins hit him up guys. Thank you to Thad. 
the truest of Texas State sickos right there. And we are also sponsored by Austin Patchmaster. Austin.patchmaster.com, one of our earliest sponsors, jumped in with us in the spring. So happy to have them back for this season, monumental season for this program, reaching bowl eligibility. And Austin Patchmaster is here to enjoy the party with us. Is your ceiling or wall cracked? Need that popcorn ceiling removed? Did you punch a hole in your wall after celebrating the Bobcats bowl eligibility? Hit up my guy, Michael Clements. He can fix those holes and more. They can do a lot around your house. He's a true Tech State sicko, a Tech State grad. They are servicing the greater Austin area. Can also provide referrals to Patchmaster agents wherever you live, Houston, Dallas, those areas. But if you're in this area, hit up austin.patchmaster.com. You can call them at 512-200-3888. It's 512-200-3888. And shout out to my guy, Dennis, over at Chilzy, chilzy.com, C-H-I-L-L-Z-E-Y. Get you some custom koozies, get you a custom tumbler. They got custom stuff all over the place. You can, uh, these tumblers here, if you get six or more of them, they can be $15 a piece when you punch in the code Bobcats when you check out these koozies. A lot of you have handed them out to you. I'll be handing them out at some more at the South Alabama game. So look for me there. Ask for a koozie. I got a few more left. Try to get a few more for y'all as well. But shout out to Chilsey.com. Appreciate them partnering with us. All right, that's enough ad reads. We'll skip the merch site, WNOGB.com. I got the shirt on. Go check it out. Uh, let's get to these Bobcats, though, because I want to get through this quick so we can get to Tyler Huff. Let's start with some non-football sports. Basketball specifically is back. They came back this week. Women's basketball, they hung the Sun Belt 2023 regular season championship banner. Then they got the win over Arlington Baptist. A lot of new players really started to, to gel and figure out that chemistry. I was at that game, had to see the banner be hung up. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of new players on the on the court for the Bobcats. Started slow, and man, they really put it to them and, and, and beat them soundly. Uh, men's basketball lost to Little Rock. They they got down by 10 and made it close towards the end. I, I got to watch most of the second half. Um, but they again, it's the same deal with women's. It's a lot of new players. I mean, you look at that on the court for men's basketball, and there's not a lot of familiar faces. Drew Drennan, he didn't even play that game, and that's probably the most familiar face that's out there. We saw Love. From, he was there last year as well, and he was doing some good things in the paint. But they have some really interesting players, really interesting talent. Uh, it's going to take some time to figure out who the leaders are and all of that, I think on both squads, but it'll be it'll be fun to watch. I am a firm believer in both coaches, Coach Z and Coach TJ, for these programs. So excited to watch some basketball. They're back this weekend. Both of them playing, what is it called? The Max Sunbelt Challenge? The Mac, Max Sunbelt Challenge. Yeah, that is what it's called. Uh, the men are playing Miami of Ohio in Ohio. And the women are here playing Bowling Green, both on Saturday. Men are at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Women play at 2 uh, volleyball, eight-game winning streak, seven straight West Division clinched. No big deal. Volleyball school. What are you? What are you going to do about it? Had uh, Janelle Fitzgerald leave. Had Dewalt leave. Uh, no problem. They've picked right back up. They again. This is like with the men's and men's and women's basketball teams. They started a little slow. New players really figured it out. I mean, eight-game winning streak. Uh, they absolutely crushed it this week. They they swept the. The weekly accolades with Samantha Wunsch, Offensive Player of the Week, Alyssa Ortega, Defensive Player of the Week, and Ryan Torres, Setter of the Week. They're hosting Coastal Carolina this weekend. I'm, I'm recording this on Thursday. They're playing one of the games tonight. Um, but there you go. Let's jump into football. Coastal Carolina this week. Uh, I'm going to power through it quick, but I got a lot of info, so we'll, we'll see how quick. I'm already behind of the, of the time I wanted, but I think I can get all this info in. Uh, let's start with a review. I like to do these reviews, especially when it's a Sun Belt team. You kind of look back on the history of playing of these two programs playing each other. Bobcats are one in three. First meeting was in 2017. That was the one win for the Bobcats. Uh, 27 to seven, 507 yards of offense that game. Damien Williams season. Remember Damien Williams? Uh, I, I clicked on the ESPN page to look back on that game. And then it had a highlight of a flea flicker to Gabe Schrade. It was a pretty great flea flicker. It was a reverse. Tyler Watts pitches it back to Damian Williams. Williams hits Gabe Schrade. 
charade lumbers his way into the end zone, had a tackler on him, but he got the last five yards. It's a fun play. Shout out to Gabe Schrade. He was Texas State's version of, uh, of uh, at least in a press conference, of Tim Tebow. That guy was an inspiring individual. If, if I'm sure some of them are on YouTube, you can look up. Um, but they've lost three of the four matchups. Oh, I'm sorry. They've lost the last three matchups. Three of the four matchups have been in Conway, South Carolina. The only one in, in San Marcos was in 2020, 49-14 loss. Uh, that was, they were ro- really rolling that year. If you remember 2020, uh, that's when they had to cancel the Sun Belt Championship um, because of COVID. I think it was Coastal that had, had uh, all the cases of COVID as well, or most of them, I should say. Uh, the other two games, 24 to 21 loss in 2019, and then 35 to 21 loss in 2021. So it's been since 2021. Most of the games are, have been in, in Conway, and again, it's in Conway again. So it's going to be four out of the five. Maybe, maybe send one back to San Marcos when, when Grayson McCall is officially gone, preferably. Uh, but Grayson McCall, all signs are pointing to him not playing this week. Uh, Tim Beck, Coastal's coach, in his press conference, at least the Sun Belt press conference, he said that McCall, this was on Monday, said that McCall was going to go to the doctor that afternoon for a head injury after missing the previous two games, uh, assuming concussion when they say head injury. And if that is the case to be to be cleared after being gone for two weeks, you would imagine they, he, they would, even if he was cleared on Monday afternoon, they would want him to be back for a week to make sure everything is going right and make sure he's up to speed and everything. So not likely he goes this week, especially after they've won previous two games with backup quarterbacks Uh, because they are on a four-game winning streak. Even though McCall has been out the last two games, uh, they've they've started a different quarterback in each of those two games. The first one was Jarrett Guest, and he didn't play this game. It was all Ethan Vasco, who's the backup, more dual-threat backup. We'll talk about him. Um, but guests didn't play and, and Beck said that it was an undisclosed injury. So whatever, whatever that means, uh, but assuming guest isn't going to play this week is what it seems like probably going to be Vasco. Uh, and we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll talk more about him. Uh, the last loss for this team was against Georgia Southern 38 to 28. And that's a team that Texas state beat. So right off, right off the bat, I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, transitive property, Bobcats. Uh, should should do well, right? But that was over a month ago. And it was when and Grayson McCall threw four interceptions, which is very uncharacteristic of Grayson McCall. So I don't know. I didn't fully look into that game. I don't know exactly what happened. But that's a pretty uncharacteristic game for Grayson McCall. Most of you know who that is. Three-time Sunbelt Player of the Year. Uh, a, a, a ton of different awards. Those are, the, those are the three big ones, though, that matter. Three times he was he was Player of the Year. Who knows? Even maybe if he hadn't been injured, he'd be in the mix. I'd say it's McLeod at JMU, but that's you know, hey, I'm not trying to start a whole argument there about whether they can win awards. They, you know, they might have offensive and defense player of the year, even with Jalen Green being out for the season for them at JMU. But this isn't about JMU. I don't know why I went off on that tangent. This is about Coastal Carolina. Uh, but yeah, so I'm not really looking at that Georgia Southern game when when comparing to to this week. I'm looking more, obviously, at, at ODU last week, who they just recently played, 28-24 win over ODU. And on the surface, you look at that, it's a four-point win over a team that's four and five in ODU. But ODU, they're sneaky good. They're sneaky good at four and five. Um, they have a three-point loss to JMU. And JMU's a wagon, 9-0, and undefeated. Uh, uh, and a six-point loss to Marshall. So, I mean, you flip those, and they're, that's a bowl-eligible program there. They have a win over Louisiana, a program that beat Texas State. Old Dominion has a win over Louisiana, I should say. Uh, they're, they're tougher than they look on paper. Old Dominion, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and Coastal Carolina beat that team with its third-string quarterback, Ethan Vasco. Um, and now Vasco is a pretty good player. I'm not trying to be like, oh, he's, he's third string. They have, uh, I guess, an embarrassment of riches, if you will, at the quarterback position. You'd think McCall goes down and it would really mess him up, but they were able to rattle off two wins. Um, but uh, this offense, total offense, it's 446.2 yards per game, which is third in the conference. Bobcats lead that at 484. Um, but I, I bring up the total offense deal because it, it's kind of interesting how their offense has flipped 
with, and it's not even necessarily because of Vasco. And I guess before I get to this part, let's talk a little bit about Vasco. I've, I've teased him enough, but he started last game, 17 for 31 passing, 180 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Ho-hum passing day, nothing, nothing much there. Rushing 170 yards on 21 carries, 8.1 carries per game. Still netted 170 yards, even though he was sacked twice. Uh, and a rushing touchdown. Um, so he's he's a dual threat, safe to say. He's a dual threat out there. He's going to want to run the ball. Uh, I, I feel like that that bodes well for the Bobcats, and, and we'll get to that aspect of it. They are very much a run-by-committee team. They don't have like a set running back, and it seems like Vasco is going to be the guy who will take the bulk of the carries. Uh, they do have two pretty good guys in Braden Bennett, C.J. Beasley, though, at running back. Very much a running team, and and that's that's flipped. It, it, I guess I guess you could say it flipped. When it was McCall, they were just they were passing more. But even before McCall got injured, they started to convert to more of a a run heavy offense. And again, you know, if, if anyone is a coastal fan and and they think I'm speaking out of turn with this, this is layman's layman's eyes on a on their season. Um, but the the last four games. Four straight games, they ran significantly more than they passed the ball, and it was four straight wins for this offense, whether it was McCall, Guest, or Vasco at quarterback. They ran the ball more, uh, significantly more, at least 10 more plays running the ball than passing in those four wins. The last time they didn't, they they passed more than they ran the ball, they lost. They lost Georgia Southern, and they passed 39 times to 30 rushes in those games. Um, so they're going to want to run the ball. And I, I feel like that bodes well for the Bobcats, um, mainly because of their, their front seven. I mean, they're second in the nation in tackles for a loss for a reason with 78. Uh, you know, I, I guess I didn't statistically look at their rush defense. I can pull it up real fast, though, because I was just looking at all that for Texas State. Yeah, Texas State, eighth in the conference, uh, a little a little on, on the bottom 50% of the conference 148 yards they're allowing per game there, 15 touchdowns. Uh, but their their passing defense is more suspect. Yeah, 10th in the conference. In passing defense, 258.8 yards per game, only five picks. They've they've done better, equal amount of touchdowns, both rush, rushing and passing for this defense. But the tackles for a loss, if it is if it is an offense that wants to pass more or that wants to run more. That's going to bode well for the Bobcats. They're going to get they're going to get off some yards. They're a pretty good team, um, especially running the ball, and they're a pretty good offense, no matter who's under center. Uh, but I, I feel like a, a team that wants to run more than pass on this team is better for the Bobcats, just because we've we've talked enough about it, where the depth is so much better on the defensive line for Texas State than it is in the in the back end of the defense. Where I don't even know if I talked about this on the last pod. I, it's too busy being excited about the sixth win, but you saw a lot of uh, zone coverages um, out there, and I wonder if that was a change or if it was maybe just something I noticed from that game more so. Um, but I think that's something they're, they're starting to feel is that depth in the back end of the defense. Um, so they do want to run the ball a lot, and they've been successful running the ball a lot, but I think that's actually a good thing for, for the Bobcats. Uh, defensively, Coastal Carolina, they have the third best scoring defense, allowing only 21 points per game. Um, it's not necessarily anything they're doing statistically as much as, as they're pretty good at, at just controlling the, the pace of the game and not allowing things to get out of control. Uh, if they do do one thing well, it's a lot like Georgia Southern last week where they, they are an opportunistic defense and they do get interceptions. They've, they have 12 of them on the season. That's second in the Sun Belt. Before last week, Georgia Southern was second in the Sun Belt with 11. Coastal passed them after getting some last week. Uh, and we saw the Bobcats. They were playing against the defense in Georgia Southern. That gets interceptions, and they were able to be pretty clean with it for the most part. There was the bad snap to TJ Finley in the first half. Uh, there was, you know, That was a turnover, but a red zone turnover should, should throw out there, but they did do really well in the red zone. So I won't harp too hard on that one. Um, but they they did a good job of staying clean against the team that ha, is is pretty good at making teams uh, mess up, turn the ball over. Uh, they almost give up more sacks than they get. They so they get uh, that's a weird way for me to write that. So <laughs> they, their defense has fourteen. Uh, they, their defense has fifteen sacks. Their offense has given up fourteen. 
Um, so on both sides of the ball, that's an area that they, they struggle a little bit at for the most part. Texas State has 26 sacks on the season, which is fifth in the Sun Belt, which is surprising. It's one of the highest in the nation. I'm pretty, I, I needed to, should have double checked. It'd take too long. I won't do it again, but they, I'm pretty sure they're top 20 in sacks nationally at 26. They're up there at least, but it, it's even that, even though it's that high, it's only fifth in the Sun Belt. A lot of, uh, a lot of salty defenses in the Sun Belt. Um, so, and again, you know, that's, they, they give up sacks, the Bobcats get sacks, they get in the backfield. It's what this defense does. So I think that that bodes well for the Bobcats. Everything I look at when I look at those numbers, uh, and I, I'm feeling pretty good for the Bobcats and maybe I'm still feeling the, uh, the residual positive feelings from last weekend. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't think so. I look at this on paper. I see McCall's not in there, even though Vasco can do it. He's pretty good. It's still not their their starter starting quarterback. It's not the uh, ideal situation for them. I think the Bobcats are going to go into into this relatively healthy. I don't think Connor Fox is going to play. He left last game. I don't think Sam Latham is, although both are game time decisions, according to Kenny. Uh, doesn't seem like either will play uh, this upcoming game. But that being said, that's that's relatively healthy for them for the Bobcats. Uh, and I feel good about this game. It, it's a Vegas has it as a two point game, two points favoring the, the Bobcats. I say they're going to win by 12. I have 38, 26 Bobcats winning this one. Uh, we'll see. I'm wrong a lot. This could be a trap game. Could be hung over from a victory. Coastal Carolina is, is a dang good program. Uh, this is a program that they're four straight years of bowl eligibility. Even though they lost their their great coach, Jamie Chadwell, he took $4 million and went to Liberty. It's a lot of money. Uh, it's a, a lot of money. A lot. It might be the highest paid G5, I'm pretty sure. Um, and they still are, are, are having a, a successful season. I mean, it's not the type of success that they've seen in years past. I mean, last year they lost in the championship game of the Sun Belt, uh, the Sun Belt championship game. They could have played on, in it in 2020, but th- that game got canceled, as I said earlier. Um, this is, this has been a program the last four years, uh, has been terrific. They came into the Sun Belt 2017 Bobcats it's when they beat them was their first year in the Sun Belt. And it feels like ever since then, they've been pretty solid, a pretty solid program. I mean, Kenny was even saying it this week where it's like playing a Boise. It's like playing one of these, these programs that, that you admire, that you hear about, you know, you, whether you like it or not, they have that, that teal field that they throw out there that the Bobcats are going to be playing on this week, but it's, uh, and so this is, this is a good program and, and they can definitely do it. Um, but I, I just feel like the Bobcats are, are at a better point in the season where, where they're at after seeing what I saw last game, a complete game. Uh, I feel like they're, they're really starting to put it together, really starting to figure out their identity. Um, I felt like, a uh, Davenport a, a, a emerged as a backup running back for this team and that and that's been something they really need although real positive seeing lincoln perry post some stuff about him doing squats and working out um you know lincoln perry leading rusher last year towards acl before the season that'll be nice to have back next year um but i just i uh I, i'm i'm really high on the cats right now um they're gonna have to do something to prove otherwise hopefully they don't hopefully this is uh this works out to be that way um, but that's it. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it short. I'm gonna leave it at that. I, I meant to leave it at 20 minutes. I'm already a little bit over. But we got to get to Tyler Huff. Good stuff there. Um, this game again, they're away, so it's gonna be on TV, ESPN Plus, 2:30 kickoff. Make sure you check that one out. Real excited for you to listen to, to Tyler Huff. Y'all are gonna really enjoy that one. Good stuff from from my guy T Huff. Uh, check out our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Win Now or Get Bent. Our merch site. I'm over here wearing the shirt right now. Our win now or get bent shirt. WNOGB.com. We got lots of warm weather gear as well. Some sweaters and good stuff. Check out the YouTube channel. Win now or get bent. Please subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Sign up your friends. Spam your friends with it. Just put it in an email. You know, I created a QR code. If you want me to send you one, you can just print it out and then and leave flyers at your work. I'm sure everybody will appreciate it. Just just hit up my DMs. Uh, follow us on Twitter at win now or get bent or x i guess uh and follow us on instagram at wnogb thank you to tgc balconies roofing and remodeling thaddeus Watkins at edward jones san marcus and austin patchmaster thank you to the wizard zach webb 
check that out. Check out all his videos that he's been posting on the YouTube channel. We even have our uncut footage of the river jump. Some good stuff there, behind the scenes stuff. And of course, thank you for tuning in, always supporting us all season. Lots more to come. Hey, we got a postseason coming, so you're going to be hearing a lot more Texas State football coming up, and I can't wait. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Win now or get bent. I am joined by one of the greatest Bobcats I've ever <laughs> met. It's Tyler Huff, the motorcycle man himself. Tyler, what's up, man? How are you this morning? Good morning, Calf. I'm doing well, man. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm fired up. The Bobcats are bowl eligible. How could I not be a, a happy camper right now? I'm, I'm doing I know it, dude. I'm doing I know good. it. You, so you rode that motorcycle out before that sixth win game. Uh, you rode it like a pro, and I, I've heard that you ride a motorcycle, and you did while you were playing at Texas State, even when you had that hurt leg. So that straight leg move you pulled out there, that was that was something you're used to. Tell me about that. Tell me about your motorcycle yeah. history. Yeah, man. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I uh, when I first got to Texas State, my only mode of transportation was a motorcycle. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I rode that every day to, to practice, to school. And, uh, yeah, even when I tore my ACL, I mean, my girlfriend would sometimes drop me off, but sometimes I'm like, okay, I, I can get there by my, get there by myself. And, uh, dude, yeah, with torn ACL, probably like a month after my surgery, I, I was riding that thing. And yeah, I had to do the leg up maneuver, uh, cause you know, you can't, you can't bend in a, a freshly repaired ACL, um, right away. So yeah, I busted out the, the legs up move and, uh, I was cruising, man. <laughs> That's hilarious because, you know, you, yeah. you see people, they have the little little scooter deals when they have the injury, you know, instead of crutches now, you got the, got the scooter, you just saw Nash Jones riding one around. You, you had a whole motorcycle. That was your, that was your yeah. uh, de facto <laughs> wheelchair. Definitely. That was mine. And then once we, once we got there, hopped off the motorcycle and then it was on crutches. I didn't have the luxury of getting one of those scooters. That would have been nice though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it goes, that's the skill position one, you know? That's, yeah, that's definitely. Good. Definitely. So the, agility, you know. the the motorcycle ride well, how'd that happen how, how'd they approach you for it or uh how how did all that go down and how did it feel to ride that out the tunnel dude i think it all started when uh it was before the season um i think it's the bobcat club does like some auction of, you know for the upcoming sporting events and uh, you know like tra travel travel to the home you know travel to an away game uh come in the locker room and people people you know sickos but you know bid on that stuff and it's like a big auction so i uh i saw it going on on twitter and i'm like dude you know what would be cool if if they auctioned off like an experience to ride the motorcycle out um i know in the past it, it's been just president dampus and like uh notable alums karen chisholm i remember her doing it and uh i was like that'd be cool i'm sure people would bid on that every time i ran out of the tunnel i was like telling my teammates dude i want to ride that thing that'd be yeah. awesome and so I think that's how it all started. I uh, just posted a tweet. I'm like, the Bobcat Club should offer offer this as as one of their auctions. And uh, it, you know, it started gaining traction. And um, some sickos were like, you got it. You know, since they finally put it on, they finally put it on their auction. And uh, some sickos were uh, were kind of harassing people like, you got to let Huff, since he came up with the idea, you got to let Huff do it. You got to let Huff ride it out. And um, I, think it, I think it was around spring ball. I got a text from uh, the AD, Don, and um, he's the man. And he's like, you're on the list to ride it out. And I'm like, dude, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, riding it out was awesome, man. I mean, you got to put on the leather jacket. We had the flyover. It was Heroes Weekend. Um, big game for the Bobcats, man. Uh, bull eligibility on the line. And, uh, yeah, it was just so much fun. It was awesome. Got the uh, the 360 camera that Webb put on me, so that's a cool thing uh so yeah they got some cool footage of it man it was awesome that was a that was a heads up play by the wizard when he told me he's like i'm gonna put a camera on on tyler i was like no way i was like you you're the man <laughs> that's that's why i call him the wizard he dude pulls yeah. out all these gadgets like a 360 camera and and right gets it going yeah it was uh i i was like how's this footage gonna turn out we, we practiced it we put it on the my wrist at first and then uh, luckily we tried it out. I sat on the motorcycle prior and the, one of the mirrors was blocking it. So we're like, okay, we got to switch this up. The wizard doing his magic. He's like, don't worry. I got a chest mount. So we're like, okay, let's switch it up. Put on the chest mount. And uh, that footage was pretty epic. 
a chest mount. That guy, he, he just yeah. <laughs> that bag is so deep that he's got uh uh-huh. he's got was, a suitcase full of it. It was a timely night for sure. You just mentioned the flyover heroes weekend, and then a tight end scored a touchdown for the first time in forever. I've been dying for a tight end to score yeah. a touchdown here for the Bobcats. <laughs> I'm sure you appreciated that too. I pre- I'm sure you appreciated that whole win. I mean, just the the atmosphere seeing that going from I, I know it's it's just been a few years that that you've been here, but in that short time, just the the change that has has happened. Can you just kind of talk about that a little bit and, and what you've witnessed in your time here? Yeah, um, I think the change in what I uh, my last season was last year, so just really over a year. I think uh, just with the players, the coach, the new coaching staff has brought in. I think there's just more competition at uh at each individual position. I mean, you know, some of the guys that were starters last year are, are, you know, they're, they're accepting their roles and, and, and they're just special team players now, which that's what you got to do. That was like kind of with my first year, I, I, uh, I, you know, I tore my ACL then came back and I, I could only carve out a role as a blocking tight end and uh, didn't really get to do what I wanted to do in the passing game and, and all that stuff until my, till last year where I was able to show what I was able to do. But, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is, is 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 the change in leadership. I mean, you know, President Dampis, Don, Travis, all those guys, man, are awesome. And uh, and just the competition and, and, you know, the level of competition at each position group. Um, you know, we got to I think I think there's a lot of debt, like especially, you know, at our quarterbacks. We got, we got three quarterbacks could probably play and probably start at, at you know, other FBS schools, same with our wide receivers, offensive linemen. It's just everywhere, man. Deep in the de- defensive line, linebackers, and secondary. So it's a. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing, uh, you know. And, and and having that that uh, that depth at all the position groups, it's um, it, you know, you, you got to compete every day for your job. You know what I mean? If you're not competing at practice, you know, you're you're not making plays at practice. It's next man up. You know, the the guy behind you is going to take your job. So I think that that's that's a big thing, a big change, and. Uh, I think that's lead to led to some of the success. Yeah, and and you mentioned it as well. You talking about the the leadership and how it's it's trickled down and the support for this program is as that's been the biggest change I've seen. Of course, the athletes they've mm-hmm. been able to go out and recruit and get these transfers to come in and and increase the profile of of this team. But I just think the the support from the top has allowed them to go out and recruit. It's allowed them to build that depth and to do these these things where they can have this this fast-paced offense, this aggressive style defense, which both styles, you need a ton of depth because guys are going to wear themselves out. Right. I just think it's it's been it's incredible that the since it's you got here at a time when it was it was finally starting to to break with with everyone around here where it was like, all right, some change has got to happen. And then it seems like it has happened and you've stuck around, which is pretty great because you're originally from California. You went to the Navy. Then you go to Saddleback Junior College. You play offensive lineman, lineman of the year there, and then you come here and play tight end. I've been I've been dying to have you on just to talk about your story. I've heard you talk about it before, but you know I want to I want to talk to you about it on here. Just yeah. uh, just tell me about playing high school football and then going to to the Navy. Uh, what went into all those decisions? What what was that all like for you? Yeah, so I uh, I started playing football, you know, Pop Warner football in second grade, and I played all the way up till my freshman year of high school. And uh, I don't know if it was, I was burnt out um, or, or what, but uh, I stopped playing football after freshman year and, uh, you know, didn't play football again until I got out of the Navy. So 10 years later was the, was the next time I played ball. And so, yeah, while I was in the Navy, I saw some uh, some people I, I played Pop Warner with that were excelling at, at the D1 level. Um and I'm like, damn, dude, like, why can't I, you know, I could do that, you know? Um, and so while I was in, I was like, okay, I'm going to get out and uh, use my GI Bill and uh, try to play ball. My uh, my younger brother, who's six years younger than me, he was playing uh, at the local community college, Saddleback. So um, it's like, I'm going to join the team. Just, I mean, I wasn't, I didn't have any expectations of, of getting a scholarship, but, you know, I, I had my education paid for, so it wasn't really a, a priority of mine to try to get school paid for. Um, it was really just to have fun, man. And, uh, and so I joined the team in 2019, the style back Juco team. And, uh, I wanted to play tight end. I wanted to play tight end and, uh, they had me at defensive end. So, you know, cool. My whole life, I was an offensive lineman. 
Uh, and, and, and maybe that's why I got burnt out in high school. It's just the coaches kept me there and it's not what I wanted to play. Uh, I always been like an athletic guy fast and, uh, and just wanted to, you know, I wanted to help the offense, you know, I wanted to help the team more than just blocking, you know, like there's some plays I'm like, get the ball in my hands. I'll go get the first down, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I went through spring ball in, in community college and, uh, was the starting tight end and, and actually doing some pass rushing as a defensive end. Um, you know, our, 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 our team got some injuries at the offensive line position and uh, the head coach asked me if I'd switched offensive line. And I'm like, you know, I was hesitant at first because you know, the whole reason I, I wanted to play ball again was not to play offensive line. Right. And, uh, and I thought about it and I was like, okay, you know, the coach is asking me to do this. I, I, I'll go ahead and do it. And uh, it was good. That season was the most fun I, I've had, man, playing football, that 2019 Juco season. Um, yeah, like you said, I got offensive offensive lineman of the year. I was second team all conference, and I only weighed 230 pounds at right tackle. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, with the success we had as a team, you know, we were nine and two, made the playoffs. We had a lot of people go D1. Uh, Saddleback Community College is, is, a, is a good program to get get out and, and, you know, get a scholarship, move on and uh, go division one. So, uh, you know, that I had coaches reaching out to me, but no division one coaches, I, you know, a lot of D2, a lot of D3 schools. And that's something I wasn't interested in. Football is a huge commitment. And, uh, you know, I already had education paid for. And so, uh, you know, the season ends. Um, I don't have any division one opportunities or offers, even though I, I, I wanted them and I thought I, I earned them with the play. Um, and so I, I moved with my family to Boise State or Boise, and uh, I just enrolled in Boise State University and uh, was there for a semester. And about uh, this was during COVID, so about halfway through that that spring 2020 semester, um, I got a I got a text from or I got a a, a DM on Twitter from uh, Coach Hamilton, who was the tight ends coach at Texas State. Said he saw my film. He, he he's a California guy, you know, so he saw my film. And uh, it's funny, the power of social media, because he saw he saw my huddle highlight from a retweet of a coach that was in California, a high school coach. So it's cool how the power of social media works. But um, right when he I mean, right when he offered me, dude, I, I mean, I was I jumped on that. Are you kidding? Like, absolutely. You know. Um, and so, yeah, May 2020, me and my girlfriend moved down here to San Marcos and, uh, you know, started living the dream, man. And uh Yeah you know, started battling it out. And, um, it was an unfortunate year. I, you know, I tore my ACL that year, literally the first day of pads in, in fall camp tore my ACL. So, which was a huge bummer and, uh, sat out that entire COVID year and, uh, came back spring ball 2021 and, uh, was really bad, man. I wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't any, anything like the player they recruited. I, uh, Partly because my ACL, right? I I, th I think I probably rushed it coming back, um, but uh, I I I was luckily enough. Luckily, I, I was able to. I, you know, I was I was I was about not. I I was almost not about to make the travel team. You know, I was just going to be a practice squad player. Which I mean, that's not cool being a scholarship athlete on the practice squad. That's how bad I was, and so I I had to really look at the things I needed to fix and uh, just take coaching. And, um, you know, the, the coaching was like, hey, you need to put on some weight and uh, we need you as a blocking tight end. And luckily I was able to carve my role out as a blocking tight end. You know, that season was that season. I, I, I think we went, I don't even know, four, four and eight. I don't even know, uh, not 2021 season. But um, yeah, I came back, uh, you know, I, I was about, I graduated that year, 2021, and I was about to hang it up, right? Um, but I was, you know, I, I knew there was more in the tank and I had more to prove that that I could I could be, you know, I could I could line up out wide. I can catch the football and, and, and be more than just a utility blocking tight end. And so that spring practice or the spring ball came in 2022 and um, I was able to show, you know, I can run routes. I can catch the football. Um, I can run guys over and, and do all this other stuff rather than just like running power and, and blocking down on guys. Um, which was awesome. I mean, you know, I, I got to, you know, end up, ended up being the starting tight end and, uh, you know, last season and it was, uh, it was awesome. I mean, I, I, I say 20, 
2019, that JUCO year was my most fun, but uh, playing football. But yeah, 20, this past season, my last season was awesome. And um, just being able to finally fulfill that dream of start, you know, starting an FBS level, uh, catch, catching a pass at, at, at Baylor. Like, you know, I'm a huge football fan, man. So it's like, yeah, I, I've watched, you know, a bunch of Baylor games, RG3 there, and, and just being able, you know, with my story and being able to get there and, and catch a one yard pass. It was only one yard, but uh, <laughs> it was still cool, man. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a weird journey, a weird, you know, I, I've always had that goal of, of trying to be a division one athlete. And uh, it, it's just weird how I, I, I got there, you know, it's a weird story. Yeah, but you got there. You got right. there, and you talk about that one yard catch. That's that's one more yard than I have, and most people listening have ever got. So I mean, what yeah. a <laughs> what a what a journey for you. That's that's incredible, and I mean, it's funny you talk about the and shout out to Brian Hamilton. You mentioned Hamilton. That guy was awesome. A high school coach, and or he was a high school coach. California, really good high school head coach in California. A long time. I liked him a lot when he was here. Do your job. I remember he'd always say that. Right. <laughs> uh, that was his thing. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I, I'd see you, I'd see you get out there and get loose in, in some spring practices and sometimes and catch some passes. And I, I was dying waiting for it. And you, I think you had like five last year, something like that. And something, every, man, yeah. every time you'd catch them, like, come on, give him, give him the ball some more. Give that guy the, give that guy the rock. But, but yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you stuck around you and your girlfriend, I, 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 a girlfriend still, or, or I don't mean Yeah, to, still, man. Yeah, I don't mean yeah, to put you on the you spot, know, it, my it's bad. Coming up. <laughs> no, no, no. You, my mom, her, every, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's still my girlfriend. We've been together actually seven years. You know, the Heroes game this past Saturday was her seventh year anniversary. So, uh, uh, you know, that's how she got to spend it. I dr- you know, we got field <laughs> passes, which was awesome. We got to spend, we got to spend our uh, anniversary on the field. So it was cool. That's the right hey, kind man. of man. That's the that's the right kind of woman, you know. That will yeah, that man. will let you spend the anniversary with a field Jeez. pass. Um, yeah, and and even on Saturday, even you know, we, we I don't know if we talked about it. The the tight end scoring, finally getting that that tight end touchdown. What were you when you saw that? Were you were you all those frustrations of when you played? You're like, where were those tight end passes in the end zone when I was there? Where where was all this when when I was cooking? Dude, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, man. I was like, yes. Every time I, I especially like wake games and when I'm watching on, on the TV, every time I see a good block or, or something, a highlight from the tight ends, I like to shout them out. So shout out to Titus Lyons and, and, and Connor Fox for getting that touchdown, breaking that streak. Like you said, man, you said in your last pod, like you, you, you've been waiting to get these tight ends involved. Dude, they're, I mean, look at every good offense. They, they get a tight end involved. In, in, and uh, I, I think that's a, a critical part of having a good offense is, is having a good tight end. I mean, Absolutely. they do so much like pass block, run block. You got to run routes, again, you know, against people that, you know, all they do is cover. And um, so I was pumped to see Connor Fox get in there. He's had, he's had a couple, couple good catches. Um, shout out to my boy, Titus Lyons though. He's on a couple of those TJ Finley touchdown runs. Titus has been there. Like that's the route, but TJ would just tuck it and go, even though Titus is open. I'm like, throw it, throw it to the tight end, but, uh, I'll take a touchdown, man. And I'll take a Bobcat win. <laughs> man, there's, there's so much, there's so it's going to be, just be a security blanket for a good offense, a tight end. And I mean, you know, I'm probably preaching to the choir, but I've heard this from non tight ends that people say tight ends are sneakily the best athlete on the field for any football team because they can block, because they can pass run. They're tall. They're, yeah. they're all the things that that go into it um, are yeah. are are important. And I've been I've been beating on the table for them to to use a tight end more. It's good to see that last week. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't deny that. I think I, I do think that the tight end is the best best athlete on the field. Uh, you got to be big and strong. You got to be fast. You got to be, you know, agile. You got to do all the things. So uh, I would, I'd agree with that. You know, and you choosing to, cause now you live around here, obviously you're, you're going to the games. You're a, a full-time sicko now as, as you're, you're putting yeah. on Twitter that you're, you're a fan <laughs> now and they're finally doing, doing successful things. I think that, think that's a little bit of a coincidence with you being there, but would you, uh, do you, what made you want to stay around here? You know, not even being from from Texas initially, but you got here and, and you've you've turned it into a home. What what was it about this area? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, 
I've always loved I've loved it here, man. You know, I've been spoiled by Texas State and being able to play ball and, and live out my dream. Um, so when last season ended, we, you know, our lease was ending. One of my girlfriend's lease was ending in uh in May of of it was this year actually. Um, and so we we had to decide what to do, and and, and she's followed me around from California to Boise State to here, you know, doing me. So we we had a talk and. and um, Honestly, she wasn't really enjoying it too much, really, because, I mean, I'm so busy with with football and schoolwork. Like we didn't get we didn't get out much to enjoy Texas. We didn't get to really go do the things that Texas has to offer. Um, so the season ended last year and, you know, we had that six months in, in, in our five months to decide on what we wanted to do. And we decided that we were going to move back to the West Coast. We, we her parents still live in California. And uh, mine are in Boise. So we we decided that we were going to move to Vegas. Uh, it's kind of like right smack in the middle of both those, you know, where my parents are right now and her parents, um, and, you know, and it's something to do. And uh, I was looking to become, a you know, a police officer over there in Vegas. So I flew out there, took all their tests and stuff and then flew back. And then it was maybe like a month before we were about to move. We, we decided, you know what, maybe we should just stay here. And uh, it's because we, you know, we got out, we got to go enjoy Texas and, and do all the things Texas have to, has to offer. And uh, she started to fall in love with it. So it was really, you know, it was really getting her on board. And, and you know, she loves being you know, being here now. And uh, we got a family here, man. Like, you know, Texas stays a family. We got a bunch of friends here. So uh, it, was, it was just the right decision to stay here. Um, right now we're living in Austin. Uh, you know, we wanted to, you know, experience being closer to this city and what Austin has to offer. Uh, we've been living here for four or five months and, uh, we're actually ready to come back to San Marcos cause we love it so much. <laughs> it's funny you say that. that. That's what I did. So when I, when yeah. I went to, when I went to school at Texas State, I graduated or even before it was a year before I graduated, moved to Austin for a few years. And I just miss San Marcos the whole time, moved back and haven't left since, you know, I I, I love that you brought up the community aspect of it, the family aspect of it. I think that's something that people who aren't around here don't really feel or see, you know, it is, it is a smaller program, if you will, a G5 program. But with that, there is that intimacy of, of everybody kind of knows each other and is around each other. And, and uh, it's, it's different here. You know, I'm sure it's, it's, it's like this at other places, but there's something really special about San Marcos. It's the reason I've made it my home as well. You know, it's just yeah, it's a great place. It really is. And I'm glad you stuck around. And you're you're a police officer now, right? No, no, no. Right now oh. I'm your I'm your <laughs> I'm your local Amazon delivery boy. Hey, so, uh, <laughs> I did that. I did that last year. Get out of here! I swear, I swear. Yeah. When, my, when my wife was pregnant, I needed insurance. Bam! I jumped right on that. Oh yeah, good insurance. Yeah. So I've been doing that for the past. Uh, you know. So we were, yeah, we were going to move to Las Vegas and I was in that process to become a police officer there. Um, actually I'm in the process to become an Austin police officer. So I got my, my physical and written test coming up November 18th, which uh, I'm going to crush. And then, uh, you know, that process will get started with the background checks and, 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 you know, um, oral board interviews and, and all that stuff. So it's exciting. I, I, I got my eye on the, this is for the February Academy um and so you know hopefully this all works out and uh we can get started on that career um you know it's it's been something i, I i've wanted to do to be able to you know to be able to provide yeah in, you know a, a good career to to, to start a family and, and all that stuff you know it's it's a check in the box and um and uh it's something i'm, I'm excited about man and so you you go from from navy to d1 football to police officer, you're just you got the manly trifecta right there. You just you're crushing it. You're crushing it. So hold on, I got I gotta ask you about Amazon since you brought up are they letting you drive yeah. the, the electric van? I got to drive the electric van before I left. Nah, dude, I don't get that lucky. I'm in uh they put me in like a they put me in like a rental van. So it's not like the reg it's not like the regular van. It doesn't have the cameras watching you and stuff. Yeah. Um but I've I, seen those electric that. vans. Those are cool, man. Those look built like for packages right like okay we got to get this stuff done you know uh yeah those those things are pretty cool hopefully we get those soon i mean i'll be out hopefully in february so uh right now they just got me in the in the in a rental van a white rental van um you know sometimes i deliver to san marcus kyle area mostly austin uh 
Yeah, but every time I actually funny, I got to deliver to Bobcat Stadium one time. I'm like, yes, I saw that and, and uh, <laughs> saw a couple of players walking out. I'm like, what's up, guys? You know, took my break down there and everything. It was awesome. So it's a cool little job. Yeah, it's yeah, it pays a, the bills, right? It's a good little good good band aid for sure. They they increased Absolutely. my my insurance through the roof, so I had to I had to dip out. But it ended up being a yeah. great thing because then I was I went all in on the pod, and it's good year to go all in on the pod, dude. Uh, yeah, I am so <laughs> proud of you guys. You guys are crushing it, man. It's been a good year for you guys, man. With the the YouTube channel coming out, the merch store, dude. You guys are crushing it, man. It's been a big year for you guys. Thank you. Thank hey, you. know what? You were the earliest of sickos. You were one of the first <laughs> players that reached out. And I was like, oh, man, this is great. Because you never know when when you never know if you're saying the wrong thing and rubbing people right. the wrong way. Because, you know, sometimes that happens. But it's it's for the sure. One, the, I never want to truly insult or offend players because, I mean, the whole reason I'm talking is because we're all we're all admiring what y'all do out there. It's it's not a. So I try to be careful and be like, oh, I don't ever want to be like, that guy sucks. Because none of them suck. They're all D1 athletes, you know? I mean, yeah. it's, right. it's it's a it's a deal. So when you reached out, that, that filled me up with a lot of confidence. And I still have your shirt from so long ago. Hell yeah, man. The one, the I just ordered, ordered a new one, man. I went on the merch site. Oh. I'm drinking out of a, a Texas State mug right now that I got at the bookstore. But uh, it's not as cool as those win now or get bent mugs, man. You know, the handle on mine right now is kind of tight. It burns my fingers, right? It, you know, that one's ambidextrous. Yeah, look at that cool mug, man. You That's nailed a, that word. <laughs> yeah. It's a I cool, get... yeah, it gives you for your big, big, big hands. You got the space so you don't burn it. So I got to upgrade. I ordered a cool shirt, the one you're wearing. I think I got the maroon one, I think. Uh, nice. But yeah, man, I, I got me some uh, win now or get bent merch, baby. Well, for that plug right there, I got to send you a, a mug now. I mean, you Hell just, yeah. just kind of gave me a great free plug that that we'll use. Yeah, so I, maybe I, a gonna, koozie just, too, man. I, I've seen yeah. you, I've seen seen you a couple times. Maybe yeah, I need one of those. I'm a beer drinker. Yeah. Man, yeah, I can't believe I didn't give you one at the game. I had some in my bag. <laughs> I should have when I when I was too excited about talking about you going on the motorcycle. Right, I got to hand you one. Did yeah, you? Yeah, no. I, were, were you able to go out to the river jump? Did you see everyone jump in and all that, dude? So I, uh, I I made a tweet, right? Uh, everyone pack your towel. Like, don't forget your towels, right? Um, and I forgot my towel, man. <laughs> yeah, it was a bummer. Um, me and a couple of former players, my old teammates, we went to – we like going to Valentino's afterwards, getting a pizza and some beer, and uh, then swinging by Chimmy's. Man, it's just – it's that's why I love San Marcos too, dude. The square is awesome. Like, they, they, you know, it's such – especially after a win, dude. Then you got the players that come out, uh, you know, later once they cool off. Uh, it's just a cool vibe, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. I love it down there. It is. It was cool for the river jump for a lot of people nationally or, or even just around here that don't know about San Marcos very well to see them, to see people jumping in the river and they're like, what is this? What is this watering hole that they're all? <laughs> yeah, right. Have you guys not heard of the San Marcos river? It's <laughs> literally a block away from the square where there's all these bars and yeah, it's a magical place. It's a great place. And with good football, it makes it even better for sure. Definitely. Yeah, no, man, I, I missed out on the river jump. I'm kind of bummed. Um, but, dude, I can't believe President Dampus hasn't jumped in. You know, that was his first. He's been here a couple of years. That was his first time touching that water. That's insane. So uh, good for him that, you know, we're bowl eligible. Now he can go float the river, man. Yeah, I was surprised by that, too. You know, he's a busy guy. And I guess, you know, you don't have a lot of time to to go float the river when you're right. Busy. But <laughs> go I lay know, out at Sewell Park or anything now. <laughs> he's gonna go hang out with Sun God if you're familiar. Exactly. With that. <laughs> That'd no, be a good collab. That would be an interesting. <laughs> no, it, it's it. You know, did you jump in when you graduated? Yeah, man. I I, uh, I didn't do it at Sewell Park where where everyone goes. I had to make it a little more extreme. I went down downstream a little bit. There's a bridge, so I stood on top of the bridge and jumped off the bridge. I had to make it a little bit cooler, right? I know the bridge that you're talking about. You're a wild yeah. man for that one. That's... Yeah. <laughs> so uh, jumped off there. Yeah, had to do it, man. That's the tradition of Texas State. That's what makes Texas State so great, man. You know, it, it's funny. When I graduated, I, I walked in twenty. Uh, I walked in 2011, but I, I didn't officially graduate till 2012 because I had three hours left when I walked. So I didn't jump because I, I was like, I still have a class left. I just right. did the ceremony. You know, it, was, it the the scheduling was easier for my family to come out to the graduation. So I didn't feel right. And I never did a makeup 
So I felt like Saturday was was kind of my makeup, you know. I never, Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I never got the jump after the graduation, but that was mine. the The bowl eligible jump is yeah, dude. Hell yeah, my graduation jump. <laughs> yeah, I put them both together. That's an epic jump, and, and everyone chanting your name. Kafka. Yeah, come on, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> Man, I, I'm I'm very susceptible to peer pressure. That's uh for that's, sure. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess I didn't ask you enough about the Navy. That's something I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about before, before we go, you know, you, yeah. you did, my dad was in the Navy 26 years. So I moved around a lot, did the whole Navy brat thing. Uh, his yeah. dad was in the Navy as an Admiral. My mom's dad was in the Navy. So the Navy is very much in my family. I, you know, I kind of broke the trend and broke into that <laughs> circle, but, yeah. uh, but it's, it's, and it's very important to me every time I hear, especially when I hear, you know, military, of course, when I hear Navy, you know, I get a little, it's means a little extra to me, but what, what made you want to specifically join the Navy? What did you do those, those four years and, and just a little bit about, about your time serving? Yeah. So, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you for your service too, man. Being, being, a uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a son or just a family member of a service member is tough. So thank you for that. <laughs> and your, your, you know, dad and your grandpa, but, um, you know, I, 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 I didn't know what to do after high school. Right. I, I wasn't playing any sports. Uh, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't letter in anything. So it's not like I, I could have gone anywhere for sports or grades really. You know, I, I, my grades weren't the best, not because I wasn't intelligent or, or smart. It's just, I didn't really care about what we were learning back in high school. Um, so, you know, it's actually a funny story. I was playing, you know, Xbox Live one time, and uh, we, we, me and my friends met this guy on Xbox Live, right? And uh, he was in the army. Dude was always on Xbox. I'm like, what does this guy do? And uh, he said he was in the army, right? And um, so I, uh, that got me interested. You know, I, that's like the coolest thing ever. This guy gets to just play Xbox all day, right? So I'm like, dude, I want to do that. And my dad was in the military. He joined the Marines uh, out of high school. And uh, he was in the Army National Guard in like 2007. He got deployed and all that stuff to Iraq. So, you know, I come from a military family like you. And uh, I, I went with him with questions like, hey, should I join the Army? You know, I did my own research, but should I join the Army or the Navy? Like, these are the branches I'm interested in. And he uh, he recommended the Navy. Just, you know, the Navy's got the best cooks, which is true. You know, we, we don't have to eat MREs. We, we get like, a, you know, we get a hot meal every day, most or, you know, three meals a day, mostly hot. You know, so, sometimes, you know, you're low on, you're low on uh, ingredients. So I remember one of my meals was like croutons and bacon, uh, but it was still hot. You know, it was still a hot meal. It wasn't an MRE. Uh, so, you know, he kind of led me down the path. Hey, join the Navy. You get treated a little bit better. Um, it's not as dangerous, right? You're not, you're not, you're not uh, boots on the ground. You know, you, I was on an aircraft carrier. I was an aviation bosun mate. I was on two different, uh, CVNs. Um, my first, first command was the USS George Washington. And, uh, I was stationed in Japan for my entire time, did a deployment on that. And, uh, I was part of crash and salvage. So what an aircraft carrier is, it's a, it's basically a floating flight, uh, an airport, right? And so uh, at airports, you need fire fire departments. So what Crash and Salvage did was we just were the fire department basically on the flight deck. So we just manned fire trucks and we had a little rotation. And uh, that's basically what I did for my three deployments. Um, you know, it, being over in Japan, you're, you're a fl- forward deployed naval force. Um, so you have to deploy every year. It's six months out of the year and you go every year instead of like, uh, a San Diego based carrier that goes nine month deployments every three years. So it was a lot, you know, a lot of time away, but you know, I was a single guy and all that stuff and uh, did my first deployment on the USS George Washington. And then we had a thing called a whole swap where we actually came from Japan to San Diego and the crews had to swap. So the USS George Washington had to go refill its nuclear reactors or something and we all hopped on the USS Ronald Reagan and rode that back to, uh, that was our new command. We rode that back to Japan. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, it was, it was a cool time, man. I mean, uh, I think that's, it's a really good route to go, especially if you don't know what to do after high school. I mean, it just, the benefits you get out of joining the military are incredible. Um, and like me, someone wanting to go to college, I, I had it paid for with the GI bill. So once I did get out, I'm like, okay, it's cool. You, 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 I get to use the GI Bill, 
And uh, when you're using the GI Bill, you get a thing called basic housing allowance. So I was living at home and they're basically paying me to go to school, paying me a, ho- a monthly housing allowance to go to school. And uh, and so it's just like it, it was just a no brainer to, to do all that, all, all that stuff, join the military and um, kind of have that be my start into adulthood and, uh, and and see where I went from there, whether I made a career out of it, which I was interested in in the beginning. Um, or if I just wanted to get out. So, uh, it's something, you know, it's something I, I'm, uh, oh, there I am something I'm, uh, I'm really grateful. I went through it a lot of tough times, but, uh, it made me the person who I am today. Awesome. It, it, dude, man, I could geek out about, about aircraft carriers. You even just talking about refueling the nuclear reactor, the fact that those things even run on those, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I've gotten, I've gotten to stand on a few because of my dad and my, and my time, but the, the military is, is fascinating. Were, were you in Yokosuka in Japan? Yeah, man, that was it. Yeah, Yakuza, two and a half, uh, two and a half years. I lived there. No way, dude. I swear. That's insane. Yeah. When I was so, did you kid. go to school uh, there? They because they got schools on base. Were you right? We, we we went on base. Yeah, I went to Sullivan Elementary School on base. Get out of here, dude. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah, yeah, dude. We probably walked the same sidewalks, did all that stuff, went to the same necks. That's small funny. world, dude. Isn't that funny? That is that is the Sullivan <laughs> brothers. Yeah, that's what the school is named after. Okay. The, yeah. The, the the four brothers on the same yeah. aircraft carrier that passed. But funny, yeah. Funny story, I guess, about that. I mean, not too funny about the the Sullivan brothers, but right. um my older brother, I got him to join right after I joined. And uh, you know, because of the Sullivan brothers, you're usually you're not supposed to be stationed or they don't put, you know, blood related siblings on the same command or on the same ship. And mm-hmm. when I was getting out, me and my brother, like I had maybe four months left and, and my older brother, Connor just got to Japan and we were actually stationed on the same ship. So we kind of like somehow broke that rule or whatever. I think, I think it's cause my younger brother was still there. I don't think they put like all the children on, uh, you know, on a, on a, on the same command, um, at least leave someone out. But yeah, we got this, we got to go on the same ship and we went on, on a deployment together uh, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool that I got to do that with my older brother. That is cool. That is cool. I'm glad I brought the Sullivan brothers. Got that little yeah. note with it. Well, yeah, no, hey, I didn't know that school was named after that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the Sullivan brothers. I, I think the mascot was the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Don't, don't quote me on that, but it's been a long time. But Tyler, man, this was awesome. This was a long time coming. We got to do this again. We'll we'll chat more. I. I even just hearing your story, I have like 40 more questions I want to ask you. So we'll have to do this Hell again yeah, soon. But I really appreciate you supporting the pod, supporting uh, the Bobcats even still, and, and being a being a local now, being in this area and being a, a real deal sicko these days. Hell yeah, man, Kev. I'll hop on whenever you want to talk. Bobcat ball, baby. Awesome. States up. Hey, let's go. Thanks, Tyler.